Greetings War Thunderers, this is Longshot with you again, with part one of my guide to flying the Spitfire Mark VC in Arcade. This is a tier 3 plane with a current battle rating of 5.3, which is commonly regarded as far too high for the plane's capabilities. Over tiered because of its firepower, but simply outclassed to that rating in terms of its flying characteristics. Indeed, that's the common view on the forums, and it wouldn't surprise me if many players simply avoided this plane in favour of monsters like the Griffin powered Mark IX. In my experience, however, it can not only compete at 5.3, it can positively shine. In fact, there's so much I wanted to show you that I've decided to make two videos on this plane. In this one, I'll demonstrate how to use the plane at low level, and in the second vid, I'll look at how the plane performs at higher altitudes. So let's look at the armour to begin with. There's plenty of protection for the pilot, along with shielding around a few of the engine parts, and even the ammunition belts. The internal components show fuel tanks located in the fuselage, with a couple in the leading edges of the wings. They're at most risk in head-on engagements, which you should avoid as fire is usually the death of this plane. Before I take it to a test flight, let's have a quick look at the modifications. Because there's no machine guns, cannon belts are on the first level, as you can see. Half of the default belt is useless. A tracer and a practice shell, but the air targets belt replaces those with deadly semi-armour piercing high explosive. That's the first modification I suggest researching, as you'll find it a lot easier to shoot planes down and therefore unlock everything else. The next most important objective is to unlock the engine mods. And once that's done, you can finally look at the new cannon mods, which reduce uh, spread and the risk of jamming. As you can see, at the time of recording this, I still hadn't quite fully researched everything. It takes a while. But trust me, the plane will be very effective once you just have the, the 20mm ammunition unlocked. Right, so let's look at a test flight. It's commonly believed that the cannons seriously retard its performance, but I haven't really found that to be true. Let's start with the roll rate. Pretty much the same as most other Spitfires. I'll bank into a turn, and we'll see if it can catch a smoke trail, which will give me an idea of its turning capabilities. I'm entering this turn at quite high speed, and as you can see, it not only catches that smoke, it over overlaps it significantly. Most spits are good high speed turners, and this is no exception. I'll continue turning, and as I do so, the plane continues to lose speed. And once I hit 290 km an hour IAS, it's no longer overlapping the smoke like it was. And as the speed gets lower, the plane just continues not to turn as well, which is also a common trait among Spitfires. Okay, so that's the elevators, let's see how the rudder compares. I'm going to hit left rudder and up elevator together and see how the plane responds. Now it's lifting and pulling to the left in the same strong proportion, so the rudder is equally as good as the elevators. And even at low speeds it still wants to keep climbing strongly, and hasn't lost any of its rudder authority. The engine's actually quite lively on this plane, and certainly capable of pushing it through aerobatic combat manoeuvres. Can this plane be used to rope a enemies and get them to stall? Absolutely yes it can. In terms of manoeuvrability, it's way ahead of the other Tier 3 planes with 420mm cannons, such as the Tiffy 1B or the F4U1C. The VC is capable of a much wider range of tactics than either of those planes. Next, let's see how it behaves at high speed, and for that, I'll put it into a vertical dive, rolling the plane to see if its ailerons begin to lock up as it accelerates. Now, once past 500km an hour, it does begin to slow a little, but it doesn't really start to stiffen that up until it passes 700km an hour. And there's no lock-up from its rudder, either. The plane not only has above average high-speed handling, it nearly reaches 800km an hour in the dive, which is not bad at all. OK, up into a vertical zoom climb to measure how well it retains that energy, along with the sheer power of its engines. And this will tell me how much altitude I can expect to recover from a high-speed dive, and how it handles when levelling the plane out at high speed. The low point of the dive was 1,070 metres, and I'm going to push the plane right up almost to the point of stall, and then level it out with elevators at only 65 kilometres an hour. The plane gets a little sloppy, but it performs the manoeuvre with a gain of around 2.5 kilometres of altitude in the zoom climb. So can this plane perform boom and zoom attacks? Absolutely it can. Better than many energy fighters, in fact. However, in stock condition, the plane is not that good. This is my very first battle in the VC, so no modifications are unlocked at all. And I'm going to be quite conservative in my tactics. I'm only going to climb a little from my spawn altitude. 
I'll fly sideways to the battle and watch the inevitable flow of incoming enemies diving for ground targets. I'm not contesting bomber altitude at all as the plane doesn't have the engine power to compete up there. What I'm looking for is an enemy plane to dive on that hasn't yet been picked up by a friendly fighter. There'll always be faster planes doing the same thing down here, so you don't want to go after the first enemy you see. Wait till friendlies have committed, then start a dive toward the stream of incomings, checking your surroundings constantly as you do so. This shallow dive heading toward the enemy is building up speed while I decide who to attack, and that speed makes it hard for fighters to intercept you. OK, the Henkel 111 looks promising. I'll curl around and attack from above and behind. My convergence is set to only 300 metres, so I want to get in nice and close. But unfortunately, the default belts don't damage him at all, plus one of my cannon jams. So I'll continue with my run back to friendly territory with Webb to boost my speed. In front of me is a pea shooter. Surely he can be my first kill in the VC. Perfect deflection shot at convergence, and I only get a hit. My speed's running low now, and I'm back over friendly territory, so I break left and look around. There's a P-51 below me that looks like a promising target, so I drop into engage, although I'll need to keep an eye on that A6M5. Nice deflection shot lining up on the P-51, and down he goes with a loss of his tail controls. Now for the A6M5. Now I'm not going to turn fight this plane. I'm just going to climb above and look to loop over and dive on him. I have a perfect shot on him here, but unfortunately my cannon is still reloading. No worries, I can just try it again. Consider that a practice run. Climbed above him, now it's just a matter of timing the attack. And that's why at low altitude you should dogfight in the vertical in a Spitfire. It's far more effective than turn fighting horizontally. Now I've regained a thousand metres of altitude and I'm approaching the battlefield again taking care to look around and keep track of my surroundings. If the enemy had control of high altitude above me, I'd need to constantly check for boom and zoom attacks. I get into the shallow dive to help me accelerate. Not only gives me high speed when I engage, it makes me a less attractive target for enemy fighters. Now this Dawner is an obvious target. I turn in and hit him from above with a deflection shot. And then I'm away, running hard toward my side of the battle. I won't climb until I'm absolutely clear. Even though I'm fighting at low altitude, I'm not furballing, and I'm thinking defensively at all times. That way my kills are clean and precise, my plane goes where I planned in advance for it to go, and I avoid being uh, caught in a dogfight. Right, there's a couple of dogfighting spits here. I zoom in to see exactly what this Mark 9's doing, hoping for a deflection shot. He's turned away from me, and ch chasing a dodging target from behind is unlikely to work out well, so I switch to the other Spitfire. He's in the perfect position for me to sweep in from above, Hit him at close range, and that handling of the dive was beautiful. And that's kill number four. And I'm again st extending back toward friendly territory, and it's at this point that I'm starting to think the VC is actually not that bad, even as a totally stock level plane. Let's see if I can get a fifth kill for Ace of the Day on my very first flight. Don't want to attack the P-63, as there's a bunch of planes already chasing him. I'll be patient, I'll hang out to the side here, and wait for the right opportunity. The Focke Wolf 190 is following the line of planes in at ground level. Probably hasn't even seen me. So I begin my shallow dive, then angle in for a deflection shot at the top of his plane. There's the ace of the day, and then things get a bit hairy. And because the game's just about over, I break from my strategy here and turn back toward a Spitfire that's chasing me, hoping to pull off a reversal and get a 6 kill. Now this could so easily have cost me my plane, as I really don't have the performance to dogfight just yet. He's quickly latched onto my tail, and I'm shaking and baking trying to stay alive until the battle ends. Anyway, provided you stay disciplined, this low altitude hit and run method, uh, method works well with the VC, and will obviously continue to work when the plane is fully researched. And there you go, not only five risk-free uh, risk kills, but top of the table as well. In this next battle, I had the ammunition belts unlocked, and I was using air targets, but apart from that, the plane was still in stock condition. I'd climbed as there were a few bombers up there, but as I reached them, they all dived away. 
This B7A2 was the last one to die of leaving me alone up here, so I started to press downwards. I won't chase him, as I just end up spraying shots at his tail as he wiggle, wiggles in the dive. There's probably easier targets for me to attack. Half of their team are way behind the battle, chasing some poor sap that's gotten himself in a kill train. That's created a large gap in the line of incoming planes, so I can dive at the enemies over the airbase. And a Yak-9 here is completely oblivious to my presence, and a very easy target as I scream in at nearly 800 kilometers an hour. And as I extend away, I see a dogfighting K-84 that I can easily pick off with a deflection shot from underneath. I thought he might have gone head-on with me, but he was obviously fixated on the plane that he was turn-fighting with. And I'm extending and climbing away to regain some altitude for the next attack. Obviously I didn't go right back up to 4,000 metres. 2,000 was more than enough, with everyone at ground level. I'm starting my shallow dive, pointing at the KF-45, but watching the pack in case a more promising target emerges. And it does in the form of the KF-43 above me. Doubtless he's watching me dive and has dismissed me as a threat. And he's setting himself up as the target for a high-speed, low yo-yo attack. By the time he realised his danger, it was too late. Now I need to dive quickly toward the friendly planes, both to escape from the burning Hayabusa and also anyone else who may be trying to intercept me. And in the process, I'll see if I can get a shot at this Spitfire. And that's another successful raid. I can see a lot of targets now down over the airfield and very few incoming, so I decide to turn back to the battle with around 1,200 metres of altitude, which should still be enough to give me a speed advantage when I attack. And I'll climb a bit more as I approached. By the way, have you noticed how effective the cannons are now that I'm using the air target's belt? Everything tends to melt when you fire at it. OK, now it's time to begin the shallow dive on approach. And the PT-8 right in front of me has isolated himself and is a very easy target. After aiming carefully at convergence distance, I'm quickly turning and extending away from the furball, checking my six to make sure I'm clear before climbing. OK, once again, approaching with only a thousand metres of altitude, I should probably have been more patient and climbed a little higher, as I'm not really fast enough in this attack run. I choose the Yak-9, as he's at the end of the line with nobody attacking him. And now I should have immediately run for safety, but I don't. I've become undisciplined already by attacking without enough altitude, and now I'm making it west by turning and looking for a second target, telling myself I have time to escape. And suddenly I'm under attack from several planes, my speed's gone, I'm having to dodge and weave and my tail controls are shot out, and I end up limping away from the battlefield, unable to take any further role in this battle, with this plane anyway. And that's what a momentary lack of focus and greed can do to you. You can't survive long in the plane by furballing, even for a just few, a few seconds it can be the end of your plane. I'll conclude with another domination battle, this time with all the engine and airframe mods researched. And I'll take this opportunity to summarise my tactics for using the Spitfire VC at low altitude. The concept is simple. Approach the battlefield with at least 1500 metres of altitude. Keep a constant watch in your surroundings. Start a shallow dive within a couple of kilometres of your targets using WEP. Choose a target that preferably has nobody attacking him already. Release WEP and swoop in for a deflection shot at convergence range. Then hit WEP again to extend away at ground level towards safety before climbing. Never follow a target if you fail to get the kill. Never turn looking for extra targets while you're down at low altitude. If an enemy does intercept you, jink around until they're at close range and then pull a hard break, and if needed a climbing spiral or scissors to get them off your tail and maybe set up a reversal, and I'll demonstrate some of that in this last battle. But most importantly, fly with your brain. Decide where and how you want to attack. Visualise where your escape route is and then stick with that plan. 
Don't let greed, exuberance or overconfidence lead you into situations where you are no longer in control and find yourself exposed to enemy interceptors. I do my best to stick with these rules in this battle, on the Russian server, but as you'll see, things soon get a little chaotic, plus I'm consciously trying to step up my aggression, and it becomes very hard to enforce that kind of discipline as the battle progresses. But I do my best. Anyway, beginning my approach dive. All the targets turn back except for this I-185, so I'm going to run him down and light him up. There's a year or two over there, but the chances are a Foggle Wolf 190 will reach him first. I can see another red dot on the minimap at close range, but I don't immediately spot him when I turn to look around, so I go evasive. If someone's going to boom and zoom me, I don't want to make myself an easy target. Where the hell is he? Can't be the P-51, as that's a little too far away. Ah, there he is. Probably high enough not to worry about. Even so, I go into a dive as I fly toward the P-51, on the off chance he might survive long enough for me to get a shot at him. Which he probably won't. Definitely won't. One last check at the guy at altitude, and he's being chased down by my squad mates. So I'm free to climb, ready for my next attack run. I'm not at my ideal altitude yet, but this Yak-9 right in front of me is isolated and looks like an easy target that I really can't ignore. Lighting him up with a deflection shot and I press the attack in order to make sure of the kill and I'm going to pay for that, as you'll see. There's a bunch of incomings right behind me. If they weren't already chasing someone else, my lack of speed in that attack could have gotten me in trouble immediately. There's four planes in the line, with a Yak-3 approaching from further back. If it wasn't for him, I'd drop him behind the kill train, but I don't want that yak on my tail. He sees me coming and ducks beneath, and then he's quickly shot down. There's a lot of tempting targets here, but there's more enemies behind me, which is why I don't engage this LA-5 flying to my right. I'm, indeed, I'm assuming that I'm being targeted, which is why I'm flying evasively, and soon enough I find that I'm right. A couple more wiggles up into a hard break, which causes an immediate overshoot, scissors back on him for a quick and easy kill. Still under fire, so I break up and left. Another overshoot, and now I have eyes on both enemy planes. And the 9K makes himself an obvious target. And now I really need to get the hell out of here, as there's more red dots approaching, and I'm far too low and slow now but another 9k is lobbing hand grenades at me. Rolling evasively as I fly toward my spawn, using web to boost my speed as much as I can. They're very close, so it's time for a climbing spiral. I quickly stop shooting at this 9k who's pulling away from me. I'm probably lucky I didn't shoot a friendly. And that leaves the 109 in the Corsair, and on the 109, a nice deflection shot opens up. And this shows the power of the four Hispanos on an agile Spitfire. Finally, I can climb and reset. I didn't take any damage, but that was a series of very close shaves, and it was brought on by initiating an attack with insufficient altitude and therefore not enough speed. However, by putting my survival ahead of getting kills and flying defensively, I've kept my plane in the air, plus I snagged three kills along the way. But I'm not out yet. I'm forced to turn back because there's a fresh wave of enemies that are too close to ignore. You don't stay alive in a slower plane by ignoring threats. You have to turn and face them. OK, Bath 185s are gone. That leaves an I-16 and a Yak-3. I decide to follow the Yak-3 out toward the A airfield to get away from this area as it seems to be a bit of a magnet for incoming uh, enemy fighters. I'm not going to catch the Yak, but the P-63 is approaching, and he uses the effective zigzag method to, uh, to dodge my uh, frontal attack. Am I finally safe to climb? No, I am not. A 9T is inbound. So many Yaks in this game, and I guess that's how you know that for sure that you're on the Russian server. But there's no escape for this one.
So three and a half minutes after I attacked without enough altitude or speed, I finally have breathing space to climb and plan my next engagement, rather than having it forced on me. My team hasn't been able to control the airspace over the central airfield for any length of time in this battle, and the enemy's about to capture it again. So as the next wave approaches, I'm going to continue my steady climb up to the edge of the clouds and see how the situation develops. It doesn't look like anyone's targeting me yet, and the P-63 is still alive. Time to drop down, and uh, never mind, too late. Out behind me is an I-185 that snuck around the back of our lines. I can't let him fly around like that unchallenged. and he's ignoring me completely, which feels rather disrespectful. I'll send a few shells in his direction, see if that gets his attention. And here he comes. The situation overseas is not going well, but even worse, there's a guy about to a cap A with no one around to stop him. Looks like my team actually might be running low on planes. I see a lot more red planes than uh, blue or green ones. Now 530 kilometers an hour is not slow, but sometimes I do wish this plane was just a little faster. I managed to kill this intruder, but not before he decapped the airfield. So while I'm here, I may as well try to cap. As you see, this will be my undoing. Firstly, in a Spitfire, capping is not very easy. Like all Spits, it has a large propeller that's all too easily broken on the runway. Plus, the wings have so much lift, it's hard to get the plane to actually touch down. Now, it doesn't help when the instructor engages uh, takeoff flaps, despite my disabling that feature in the game, op game options. And here I do something really stupid. I'm intent on capping, and I'm ignoring the minimap, which is showing multiple inbound enemies. I decide to turn back for another cap attempt, and as you'll see, that's going to cost me my plane. Suddenly the enemies are here, and I'm forced to dodge. I've got no time to get my speed back, I've even forgotten to raise my landing gear, and soon enough, someone will put me out of my misery. When you're flying a fighter, if you're not thinking in terms of offense, and you take your eyes off the battle around you, your plane ceases to be a fighter, and becomes a helpless target. Anyway, I hope you found this video helpful. Please watch for my next instalment on the Spitfire VC when I take it up to higher altitudes. If you want to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe, and feel free to leave comments in the section below. Anyway, until my next video, good hunting, and I'll see you in the skies.